So let's start our uh, third day of symposium, International Symposium of USBS uh, about the COVID-19 and Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, good morning, it's good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you hear me? Yeah, My I can. Okay, so let me start to uh, present our first speaker, Dr. Shomali. Uh, Dr. Fumali is the Director of Global Affairs and International Relations and Outreach of Techno Yes. Excuse me. It is better to wait uh, uh, 10 minutes because of the, we will, the, we announced from 11 o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock. So that a moment, please. Okay, Dr. Okay. I think so, it's, it's 12 p.m. So maybe a few minutes, okay? 10 minutes more? Okay.
Wow, Pata. Mm.
Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. So let's start. We have three minutes. Uh, you have three minutes, three yes. more minutes. Yes, three minutes. <laughs> yep. Please start. Okay. Thank you, Professor, for coming. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I will start the third day of our international symposium. <clears throat> our first speaker, Dr. Shumani. She is the director of Global Affairs and International Relations and Outreach of Techno India, India Group, Sister Nibirita University, India. Her area of research include transcendental leadership, social responsibility, management insight from Indian philosophy, and spirituality, area of expertise, leadership studies in business management studies, India philosophy. It's teaching in interdisciplinary and diverse quite area of study of sustainability, stress management, value-based education, business ethics, appropriate social responsibility, and IVLB alumni awardee of May 2018, invited talks at the University of Beloit, Spain, and University of Madrid, Spain, May 2019, France, China, December 2019, Gross Leadership Academy, Nibel, June uh, 2017, estimated speaker at Sakura Science Plan, Japan, January 2020, and invited speaker at, uh, at 11th International Symposium on a general overview of the need of interdisciplinary studies in global perspective organized by Okoyama University, Japan, January 2020. Thank you, Dr. Shumali. I will stop sharing my screen to share your screen now, please. Yeah, I, can I share my screen now? Yeah, yes. Before I share my screen, uh, screen um, very good morning to all of you, though it's afternoon over here. And I know that we are going to, I'm going to speak on something which is not at all scientific, but um, it deals with management, something that psychology has to play a part, the inner depths of leadership. And I'm, I'm sure that all of you are leaders in your own way. So uh, just a small glimpse of what the world needs today from we leaders. Thank you. 
Uh, is the screen uh, viewed by you all? Can you view this? Uh, please. Uh, is it okay? Uh, Sir, is it okay now? Yep. Uh, full screen mode, please. Full screen. Full screen. At the bottom, at the bottom, there is one full screen. Share hook check. Can somebody help me with this? You will find yeah, it's, it's in the bottom. It's big, it's yes. Big. You can... Be better. Yes, you will find a cup of... Uh, sign of cup. Yes, here. This is okay. Is this full screen? I can press on it and we will turn full screen. Sorry, I, I didn't get you. Okay, you can exit or stop sharing the screen, then enlarge the your screen and then start sharing. Okay, you you are you are going to share share my screen. Okay, I will. Uh, you can stop sharing. I will share from my side. It's okay. Uh, why isn't this full screen from my side? It will you will get to okay. no no no. You have to you can you have to uh, press on the slide. And we'll turn full PowerPoint presentation, like video presentation. You find it in cup video. Is this okay? Yes. It's okay. Yes, okay. Okay, dear. So I start my presentation. This is the topic of today's presentation. Um, COVID-19 and the need of value-based, transformative and authentic leadership with special focus on education fraternity. I'm Dr. Shumodi Pain and I head uh, the Department of Global Affairs as Dr. Waller said. So, uh, today what we see is COVID-19 outbreak is the most challenging crisis the world has ever faced since the Second World War. We all know about this. Now, it does have all decremental effects on social, economic, the political, and as well as educational framework of the world. As educationists, we now see that um, we... Assalamu alaikum. Hello? Yes, hello. Was, was, there, a, was there a question from somebody? I'm sorry, Dr. Shumari, please not disturb for speaker and uh, turn all our uh, mic is mute. No, no question without, while uh, speakers give uh, here or his presentation, please. So all our mics will be muted till speaker finish his or her presentation. So Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Ahmed, may I ask you to mute your uh, phone and any professor uh, or participant mute your mic, please. I'm sorry, Dr. Shumali. May you continue your presentation? It's okay. So, the outbreak of COVID-19 has actually affected us, um, which in a form is a crisis. So in management talk, we definitely say that this is a, some sort of crisis that we are facing now. And somehow we have to come out of this the crisis and that in managerial studies, we, we call as the crisis management. So if I go back, what is, a, what is a crisis? So a crisis in any event that is going to lead to an unstable and dangerous situation affecting an individual group, community, or the entire society. If we just take this definition into consideration, we are going to see what COVID-19 has done to us. It has led to all of us to be very unstable in life, both personally and professionally. We are facing a very dangerous situation now because we really don't know today we are okay. What is going to happen tomorrow? Are we going to live? Are we going to die? Um, it is affecting us as an individual, 
the group as such, the community as such, the entire country, the entire world, the entire society, we are at, uh, I would say, awestruck into how to handle this because we really don't know. Majorly, crisis comes in this way. Crisis comes all of a sudden in a very unpredictable event. It might be natural, it might be psychological, it might be unforeseen financial crisis, anything where we really don't know what to do for the time being, for the time being. When we face a crisis, we don't know what to do. And that is always a threat point for a potential risk or a potential risk. Majorly till now, till now it is said that uh, this pandemic the situation, we, have, we are the wrong generation which has uh, faced this maybe after five the generations. But this is uh, something which we uh, don't know. It came to us very abruptly. Um, well, we were seeing from a distance that it was about to come or somebody else is going through that. But the time was really not given to us that how to deal with that. This dealing is important because this is what we call as crisis management. Somewhere the crisis has come to us. We are undergoing the crisis. And how do we manage the crisis now? So what is crisis management then? It is the application of the strategies designed to help. I'm speaking about the uh, about in the light of an organization, but I'll come to the education fraternity later on, because till now, every crisis management cases were um, given with an example of an organization falling out, like Lehman Brothers, like Golden Chess, many of this we 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 really don't know it is always how to deal with a sudden and significant negative you know, things that happen now then what happens the crisis has been there crisis management has to be done how to do that we develop a crisis management plan which actually helps the team to identify the potential threats we Unless and until we identify the potential threats of a crisis, we possibly cannot combat those. And how to do, do that? The main two, uh, uh, I would say, um, tools for crisis management is communications and information, which they are going to need to deal with these threats. And the education fraternity is not out of that. Because if we do not have a proper communication from an able leader and proper information about how to deal with a crisis, none of us will be able to survive and sustain in the crisis. So these are, in a nutshell, five stage model for crisis management. First is the signal detection. Now, signal detection should have happened when China was affected. Uh, many a times we, that, we see that this signal, uh, the detection or identifying weak signals, which later on turn into very strong signals, is overlooked by the leadership the fraternity. And this is where the first stage of crisis starts. Anyway, if we cannot re reveal this, then the next comes into probing and to prevention. Once now you have identified, say for example, better late, but you have identified that these are the, the potential threats, the crisis is going to come to us. So it is detected. And then the next step comes into, you probe into the matter. You just can't run away from crisis. You just can't say that somebody else is affected and I'm going to be okay with that that cannot happen because sooner or later you are going to be affected and we have seen that 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 has really happened and then you start to take a prevention after prevention comes your damage containment some damage will be done in these two first of the phases till you identify the signal and then you probe and then you start to prevent already 
it might be if the damage is less your 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 recovery part will be much more faster but if it is more then this recovery phase is going to be much much more and it's going to cost the organization other other society as a whole uh, they have to pay a very severe part to uh, to it but the final part and this is the main part of a crisis management is learning what has what is the take away from here we have suffered we have probed we have prevented we have damage control taken and then the recovery phases starts but the learning the take away has to be very very keenly taken because who knows what store for us in future so if we do not learn from what ever we have lost or gained or how did we come out of the whole thing the entire model of crisis management comes to a stand still because the entire gamut actually starts and ends into the learning that we learn from the situation i'm not going into this because i've already spoken about this that what they are the stages i now come to crisis management and to leadership now you know like in any crisis leadership happens to be a very very vital phenomena in every situation it is because if the leader somewhere is uh, not very sure that how he is going to uh, lead his team how he is going to motivate his team how he is going to bring out his team from the entire crisis the entire structure is going to fail it's bound to fail so be it the world leaders be it political be it organizational be it industrial or be it educational if the direction from the leader is not right and if he or she cannot manage the crisis very effectively in all the sectors crisis can never be dealt with hence leadership is a phenomenal it's 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 always a phenomenal statement that we see or a stage that we look upon because leaders are uh, just not uh, they just not sit on the apex body of any organization uh, their thoughts their action their communication uh, their uh, penetration i would say to the lowest strata of the of the pyramidal structure is actually what helps the entire organization come out of all crises that they have that they meet so what basically is the the leader's role in crisis management i have already told this that it's not that how you face but how you the resolve it's in the work of an organization the first trait of a great leader is to able to build teams that work well together and help to set the tone for the organization here we are going to talk about um, a crisis which has been built by covid-19 worldwide so if in an educational sector too if the if the leader if the higher spectrum the leader do not build team to deal with all sets of the clients like clients we will we will go into clients there are parents there are students there are researchers there are faculty members there are um, group day staffs everyone is actually related to this common trait of the leadership where a team has to be built and fought together to come out of the crisis in the in the same tune so crisis leadership skills these are the five crisis crisis leadership skills first one is communication very very vital straight i would say that communication is the most important um during any 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 crisis because if you do not communicate very clearly if you do not communicate what exactly is the need of the situation if you do not communicate what is the gravity of the situation if you do not communicate to uh 
boost the mental health of your team members you fail as a leader because it is in a crisis it is only through communication first i mean the first few days it is through proper communication you have actually you you actually win the war basically to this then it comes to adaptability because there's a certain change there's a certain change in everything it's psychological mainly it then comes to your physical adaptability now a leader has to take this responsibility to come in front and start the adaptability the procedure himself or herself because if this adaptability is not there there's there's a change management going on too like from a very comfort zone you are going to uh, step into a very uncomfortable zone perhaps unknown zone which you really don't know what has got in store for you so adaptability with real prudence is also needed the third is self control um many a times we see that um a very able leader do not lose this they actually don't get angry they don't get irritated they don't get uh, paranoid um they don't express negative emotions that is what we known as self control because and the entire team is actually looking up to him so if he gets irritated if he gets paranoid if he loses his cool then automatically the all those negative traits are going to be percolated to the lower strata as well as a result crisis couldn't be met and if it couldn't be met if people lose their self control there a pandemonium inside the organization is also going to start which will be very very difficult to control the outside pandemonium then i mean both the contrasting um factors will be devastating for for an for, a, for an organization then comes to relay relationship management what normally happens is um, if in a normal day to day life a leader uh, might uh, not have time to give uh, individual attention to relationship management but over here yeah, uh, we have to understand that each uh, member of an education organization of any organization here the boosting part here the relationship part one to one interaction part maybe in group all this will again come through communication but this is also a very important factor because every relationship has to be taken into account so that they don't lose their morale and obviously last but not the least it is the creativity because you have to think out of the box you can't really think that what has gone uh, what has been done for the last uh, 10 15 years into education or into any organization we have seen a small virus have changed everything so unless and until you are creative unless and until you come out with something new unless and until you make yourself uh, you create something and make your people adapt to that something new and that to through self through you know communication where people might oppose and there comes your relationship management and self control i would say self control of your anger so now i come to the main part of my of my presentation i shall be focusing on educational leadership and how it can effectively deal with crisis management in post covid 19 situation before i've started i wanted to give you all about a management thought that what is actually needed so that we get a fair idea that what's what's needed now educational leadership is uh, though we talk about this but we are very very different from the industry uh, from the i would say factory type of a leadership because we actually uh, deal with Uh, abstract uh, abstractism much more 
then all those things that though education but all those things that management books can teach us because we 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 deal uh, much more with young minds uh, we nurture them we build them uh, in a way then we build a society and uh, here compassion empathy um i would say trust honesty love all those traits which cannot be quantified comes much more into picture than any other traits because we 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 deal we we don't deal with machines we deal with human beings always so what we see in education leadership is this for actually dominates the leadership you think of a great leader you think of a great uh, teacher you will always see that he has got values first because a great teacher without values cannot be a cannot even think of being a teacher you have to be honest to yourself you have to have values that is going to percolate to the students and then to the society you have to have a vision yes agreed that vision is needed for all visionary leaders somebody who uh, creates a country also uh, as a prime minister has to have a vision but our vision is again a not political vision our vision is a much more psychological vision that what exactly to build the to bring out the goodness in others in a way empower you have to uh, learn this trait of leadership where we we we, we would not uh, hold the power to our hand and uh, be a dictator because that cannot be a trait of an educational leadership uh, uh, yes in a way um, when you are strict with your students or with your fellow members people might uh, think that you are not empowering them with whatever uh, needs that they have but that is because of the values you carry that is because of the vision you carry and uh, finally uh, it is all about encouragement uh, every day we as the leader we have to learn to say well done no matter whatever they do it especially in the time of crisis every small thing that our team member does our student does maybe he's trying to adapt a new way of teaching there it's that encouraging factor that is going to be a very vital thing because we have to remember it's something new for them they're trying to adapt as well so keeping in mind these four things is the main trait for educational leadership traits of successful educational leaders first the importance of building community because we we just don't uh, concentrate on one student it's just not just a student for us it's a global community i can teach somebody in egypt and i can teach uh, them uh, about uh, my culture and in a way when i teach them i learn myself too so it is like bonding and building the community the global uh, world as a whole and um, you know like that makes it a very um, coveted place to start to live in because that is what what education actually teaches us to empower teachers and cultivate leadership skills always it is always an educational leader uh we see that uh, they try to nurture and give power to a teacher and cultivate the leadership skills that they have uh, we 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 will always see that whenever uh, we uh, go to complete a phd the first time when uh, we have done the phd um how many times we have changed a synopsis because the first time my guide said that you write your own synopsis and i know by the time two years have gone i was changing changing my synopsis into new learning and uh, 
by the time I was very confident saying that this is my skill and this is what I need to work, work on, he just absolutely left it to me that choose an area where you will be comfortable. They utilize data and resources. Well, this is again um, a trade for all leadership. But yes, every day uh, we upgrade ourselves with every new journals, every new data, every new scientific um, inventions that is there because we have to update ourselves and let our students know. We should have a vision and a plan. Like at the end of the day, what next? It's just not study this. It's just not doing that because we're leaders. So what in the first one year, what? In the first five years, then what? And in the coming 10, 10 years, what? That has to be there. We create collaborative, inclusive learning environment. This is what we are doing now. I am, I am sitting in, in India, in Kolkata. That's, a, that's in eastern part of India. And this is our job to create collaborative, inclusive learning environments. Because in a way, I learn from you, somebody over there in Cairo. Uh, whenever I hear your talk, it is all inclusive learning. I uh, make you learn, and I learn a lot more from you in return. This is something, teaching or education is something, it's about passion. Again, something which cannot be quantifiable, not statistically found out that how much passion is related to a leader. You, if you are passionate, it shows and it shows when we go to a class and we start to take a lecture, uh, starting from calling up the students' names, <clears throat> I mean, it's not role numbers, but names. And then knowing them personally too, because the uh, job of a great education leader is also being a mentor. So uh, again, I said that you, it's, it's a human being that we are going to deal with. We cannot, we can't afford to uh, deal uh, with somebody. Encourage risk taking. Yes, many a time we have to um, ask the students, the, the students, the team, uh, the young or junior faculties, many a time might ask the lead, as a leader that whether uh, risk taking will be worth or not because we have to give them that backing and we have to say that yes, you are in the right path or uh, do it. Let's see what, what can be done. We should lead by example. A, I, uh, a leader uh, is mostly education leader, has to be very uh, empathetic, I would say. So if I uh, believe in something, that is where my values come. If I believe in something good, I have to do that myself or else I can't ask my people to follow me. That cannot be done. Uh, persevere. Normally, this is seen. Why I have told the, the given this is in an industry, people keeps on hopping off and hopping on whenever they get a good hike. Because, uh, but expected that uh, they have a common saying that after two or three years, if you continue with the same industry, it's um, but understood that uh, you are not a good uh, employer. Uh, but that never happens in a university. Normally, normally it is seen that people who stays with a university, the sense of a commitment grows, the sense of the research grows. They normally build the university on their shoulders. So it's like their second home because that's how uh, we see the education leaders as. And yes, we are lifelong learners. I Every day I learn from my students. Every day I, um, I, I actually take great pride in learning from them. They teach me what's going around from the world. They teach me what's in fashion. They teach me uh, what the young generation uh, wants to do now. So it's fun basically. In a way, we don't grow old because uh, we are amidst uh, students who are uh, young and they don't allow us to grow old. 
crisis response in educational industry yes we had some guidelines from unesco uh, made especially for uh, education uh, leaders but i just uh, uh, thought only one or two which will be uh, more appropriate to highlight on that so what did they say the, the second point is addressing psychological needs of the students you see this is the need of the hour we are actually going through a crisis which is much more psychological uh, than physiological yes we have to take care of our health that's okay but everything happens in your brain first so this paraphernalia this understanding this um, uh, panic panic stricken things that what is going to happen to my studies what if uh, my, my my examinations are next year my board examinations are next year and i really don't i i haven't been to school now because it's lockdown so psychologically you are um, teaching them online where they're seeing but they're not habituated with this type of a teaching they want to go to the university they want to go to a school they want shock and duster they want to interact with you they want to come to you with their books. They want to hear words of encouragement from you when a good research work or a project work is done. And everything mechanically cannot be done. So we have to be very, very focused how to deal with this psychological crisis that the students, that the parents, parents are equally worried. So if a students hear every time in the house words of, you know, like crisis, like what's going to be the next year? Uh, how are you going to cope in the exam? Is online teaching better than classroom teaching? Um, you are listening to YouTube, you have muted your video. Uh, you are not paying attention to your online teaching. So all these things actually uh, it's a psychological trauma for the students as well as the teacher because they are adapting to this changed learning and environment. We were not habituated with this. Yes, conference, Skype conference, Skype seminars, these are all okay for us. But we never knew that this is going to be a part. This is, this is going to be the life for us for the past <clears throat> six months it has been there and maybe for the coming six months also this is going to be there so what do we do we have developed new skills for virtual the, the learning and as i said that uh, everywhere this psychological stumbling comes into first it comes into the teachers then it comes to the students and is it okay is it can i cope up uh, am i doing the right thing um, will this actually help the students? Uh, how will the, will the examination, uh, the process be okay for them? All this thing, again, could be solved with only one mode of leadership trait. That is effective communication. Communication which will need value-based and authenticity from a leader. Because, you know, like authentic communication has got um, no substitute. If whatever you want to speak, if it really has value, if it really has genuinity in you, it shows, your honesty shows, your authenticity shows. And it will be effective when you try to implement and change the entire system. And here comes, this is, this is a very vital trait for an educational industry because uh, we have to judge the psychological needs of all concerned and accordingly, as I said, adaptability, communication, uh, creativity, everything will come into picture. So we all know that what has uh, been done to the educational systems and its effect. 
a near total closure of schools, universities, and the colleges. We uh, I don't know the situation in Cairo, but in but in India, yes. Still now the universities, the colleges, the schools are uh, closed from March the twentieth. So what are the challenges that we uh, face today? Uh, we face at communication. Communication is again the open line of the communication because it's not there because it is uh, becoming less accessible. Every time, uh, you know, like people uh, staying in a one room, a one flat, not being able to go out, it is something uh, very harmful. So then again, communication comes into picture in whatever small way we can, maybe through WhatsApp, maybe through a small video, maybe through a small text, a small communication can actually change life. Now a very positive communication actually changes life too, because we are seeing, we are seeing over here, there are immense cases of the depression going on. People are not being able to go to a friend's house. People are not being able to play football. Uh, young men are not being able to play anything outside. It's just to stay back in the house and you just uh, see the faces of your parents or your family members there and uh, you're not allowed to go out. This is, this is something which the student fraternity never dealt off because they're young. They want to go and play baseball outside. They want to go and play football outside. They want to meet their friend. They want to go to a movie. Everything cannot be done from a house. So here, communication, positive communication, words of encouragement will actually matter a lot to bring them out. Uh, we shouldn't allow the students, a good leader shouldn't allow the students to feel disconnected at any point of time. The students, colleagues, the, the researchers cannot be disconnected from the leader. In very small way, you have to stay connected to your team to boost up their moral here. And yes, they are also high time that we have to change uh, the adaptability uh, through communication, through again the connectiveness. We have to boost them for the new adaptable system that uh, the world um, has made us to face now. We, we, we really don't have any choice now but to face, but to change and uh, work for the better. Uh, there are few of the things that has affected the education fraternity as well, that is economic and the societal consequences too. Um, according to International Monetary Fund, we have seen the global GDP is the predicted 2.4% in 2020. Indian growth uh, went down to 3.11%. Now why I'm telling this is, um, we the teachers, we the teachers of the third, third world, uh, we will uh, we will uh, see poverty and inequality happen there. If the unemployment rate goes high, the poverty goes high, decrease in the government income, collapse of the tourism, hospitality, everything. Ultimately, the nutshell is it is disadvantaged. There will be a percentage of the children who will move away from studies because of this economic and societal consequences because their parents simply don't have the money. So this disadvantaged children, this is where again your values, our values will matter a lot. We have to talk to the government or we have to talk to the competent authority of the university so that this strata of the children gets a chance for interrupt, uninterrupted learning uh, they cannot compromise on their nutrition. They will have to, but uh, if somebody uh, is not having, uh, we, we have to, yes, the government of many countries are seeing into it that the nutrition, childcare problems, uninterrupted learning is taken care of. Even we have a societal, um, uh, I would say responsibility to see that through our universities, even the, in a very small way, if, I, if we can help even 10, uh, the children who are not being able to pay their fees or maybe we, we, or we, we offer for a midday meal for, for them in our own capacity, uh, 
uh, we take care of the child care problems we we actually uh, talk to them we mentor them uh, we cannot allow any children to get into depression in very small way what what can cure depression is just talking nothing else matters you have to make them talk so that they come out with their problems and boost them up that is what we are for that is what a good teacher a good education leader is actually all about we then we move on to uh, further strategies i have talked about this symbolic that revisit the framework in very small way we have to change the framework in uh, from our comfort zone uh, we have to change for the need of the hour we have to forego top down decision making key planners must be involved in the planning process i mean it's it's uh, not uh, always um, the top educational leaders who should take all the decision making uh, involvement from uh, mid managerial level is also or uh, mid faculty level i would say will also play very vital here in spite of all odds we know we are going through a very very difficult phase but we have to um, focus on professional development so you uh, we as a we as a leaders we have to uh, help the teachers who work under us to develop the capacity and learn in a new phase of virtual learning so uh, maybe um, if uh, somebody is a good researcher Uh, many of the research uh, research institutes now are offering online course talk after phd so we have to boost them up and say that yes enroll into a new course do something new learn something new so that in the long run the teaching fraternity actually gets helped by your new learning this is the right time to build networks to collaborate to share best practices with each other with the entire world because uh, the the planet at large for the education fraternity is the same we we the teachers we truly believe that uh, our counterpart sitting in japan or in the usa has got much much uh, to teach us and in a way they should also get a chance from learn from us because that is how Uh, the education collaborations work it is all about knowledge sharing so leading in the time of crisis i just uh, came to the end of the presentation the first for this that lead by example be an example yourself because or else the crisis cannot be met empower others to lead not merely follow we we just can't say just follow me and whatever i do you do it no you have got the right to your own ability you have a, a potential to shine by your own power so do it and if you do it uh, we are there to back you up yes open lines of communication there shouldn't be especially we the teachers we actually don't know uh, what is closed lines of communication so it's always open lines of communication that you learn from me and i'm eager to learn from you because that is what is the most critical job of an education leader um i told all these things but again in a nutshell that we do strengthen the ability to influence to give the clarity to reduce stress and guide the decision making actions um shared value i said yes you have to be you should have a core set of shared value yourself to percolate those to all your members effective educational leaders help educate uh, help all the educators from teachers to administrators to counselors to coaches and motivate each other to improve and innovate into their last classrooms because or else uh, the educational institute do not grow it cannot stand on one leader we as leaders to create more more leaders so this is what find out what's happening we face the crisis we are we should be vigilant that 
no more harm is done. Prioritize that what exactly to be done now, what is the need of the hour, and knowing that what you can control and what you can't. The things you can control, do control that with your prudence. What you can't, you just have to wait time to take a control of that. So that's it. Thank you. I would uh, love to take the questions uh, from you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shumari. It's a very interesting, very important uh, lecture. Actually, I, I hear it and uh, uh, go live with uh, Facebook uh, at our group uh, in Symposium. It's very important. And, uh, you know, I don't want to finish this um, lecture. I want to hear more and more <laughs> about crisis management and uh, educational management in crisis as a... Um, as a, a person involved with, uh, and as a mother, <laughs> I wanted to hear more and more. <laughs> Thank uh -huh. you so much. And uh, I want to welcome any questions uh, to uh, this uh, great, amazing um, lecture. So please, uh, I have a question from Dr. Uh, uh, Amel Kamel. Kamel, she uh, is raising her hand from a while. So Dr. Kamel, Kamel you can uh, write uh, in chat room or you can Ask your question, please. So, Dr. Abel, you are here? It's okay. So, anyone have any questions? Uh, they can think about the question, Dr. Wala, and uh, you can share my mail ID with them. So, in case if they want to interact with me or they think of a question, they can always mail me. Okay. So, uh, share with everyone. Thank you so much. It's a very important um, lecture. Actually, uh, when uh, you talk about any crisis and how uh, how many leaders manage uh, this uh, crisis uh, and how um, how we can control our uh, our um, step for uh, plan for management, it's uh, very important. Away from uh, medicine and health, <laughs> it's uh, very important. It yes. took more time. Uh, half an hour was given to me, but. Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. So we have five minutes. Thank you. We have five minutes break till uh, we um, present our next speaker. Dr. Rakesh, you are here. Okay. You can prepare your presentation and uh, okay, mm. I hear you. So Mm. So, Dr. Ola, I, I sent you already. Could you share with for me or could I share? Uh, if you want to, <coughs> sorry, if you wanted to share uh, your, uh, from your side, it's okay. If you, you, ca you can't, I will share from my side. I, ca I could do, not to worry. If you want to, be, both ways, I'm ready to do that. Okay. Oh, so, only five minutes uh, or three, five, three to five minute break and we okay. will start your presentation. So, we can share uh, it from your side uh, freely. Okay. And if, so, if anyone have any question, we can, uh, I will, um, by the end of the day, I will share a Google document for any questions about uh, uh, today and the last, um, the past two days, first day and second day. You can uh, type your question and the uh, name of the professor, and we will um, send these questions to all professor, uh, and they will answer, and they will uh, send again by emails. Okay, so uh, I may request from all participants to uh, send it to me uh, um, the full name for certificate of this uh, symposium, full name and affiliation and email. So please, uh, if you care about this e-certificate, uh, please send me your full name and affiliations and uh, uh, email in contact uh, if you want. Okay, thank you. So, Dr. Walla, you are going to share as would I share my PPT.
So I will start to uh, present you. So okay. Dr. Wala, you you're going to share my PPT, na? No, I will uh, present your biography. Then then you can share your presentation from your site. Okay. Okay, sure, 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 sure. So my next speaker uh, in the third day of uh, symposium, uh, Dr. Rakic is assistant uh, professor and HOD of mathematics and statistics department at SRM, Kim University, Jan Kotok, India, Geo Prestige Health Co. RB Fellow in Center of Infectious Diseases Research in Zambia. He did PhD and master degree in, sci in health statistics from Institute of Medical Science, Banaras Hindu University, and the Master of Population Science from IIPS Mumbai. He has more than 10 years of teaching and research experience in epidemiology, oil statistics, and public health fields. He has worked in the field of HIV, AIDS, cancer, child mortality, Currently, he is focused on machine learning technique for health data. His main research area in survival analysis, multivariate data analysis, and machine learning techniques. He is currently serving as judging panelist for the data science in healthcare and public sector for International Data Science Award in, in, in Creator, Manchester, UK. And he is a member of BACTV Network UK and a lifetime member of International Indian Statistical Association, USA, and the Indian Society of Human Genetics. Welcome, my dear professor, and I will stop screen uh, sharing my screen to can uh, share your screen now. Okay, thanks, Dr. Wala. Is so always I not believing in the two uh, big. Uh, this way. Uh, I have to go. There are a lot of things already open. You can only minimize the the yeah. all 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 all, uh, win, uh, all web or pages and allow only PowerPoint on your desktop. Yes, yes, yes. that's what I'm trying. Okay, to you can minimize this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Better, and you can start your uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, this is coming. You have a very busy uh, desktop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's, yeah, it's busy with the, my students, PhD students. That's why. Yes, yeah, but uh, <laughs> it slow your uh, your uh, computer by heavy desktop uh, icons. So remove yeah. it. <laughs> just okay. Uh, this is okay, now? Eh? Yes, it's start load, so you can uh, maximize the uh, the PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah, this would. This is okay now. Yes, sure. Yeah, yes. it is okay. So you can listen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, firstly, thanks to Dr. Fukomi and GSPS and Dr. Wala to give me the opportunity for this uh, situation to talk about that and uh, COVID and sustainable development. And uh, basically everything changed around the world. So uh, a lot of people in mind, especially researchers, it's any change in the also statistics could the change in the 
any kind of research so how could change the statistics in the current situation so that's based on the time to my topic is going to speak uh, change the role of statistics in covid pandemic so i am the faculty already dr wala uh, told about me i'm not going to detail about myself so this is a start with the, this comment uh, undp official comment covid 19 with its triple hit to health education and income may change this trend this is a official comment by the undp so this is how the situation could uh, you know the covid is going to be so this is the basics of goal of sustainable go uh, development goal so this is a 17 goal for the across the world they are going to complete in mostly they achieved in 2030 and before this crisis mostly these are going on in try trials mostly the uh, uh, country they are achieving all that even we are like some infant mortality and when maternal mortality even we are declined as hiv aids and so some malaria issues before this has going a planning in very proper way but see this is situation is like how is the showing the covid 19 is going on see mostly is like you could say like uh, region of americans even there after the european region and then up, uh, now uh, south asian country like this is uh, as on uh, 6 august 2020 this report is showing still is maximum in the region of american death uh, america is area is more highly like uh, number of cases and de uh, death in the covid and this is showing the report so uh, also reports in the this is a i got the official report from the who on some ndp this are uh, they are going to severe impact on that sorry that uh, and doesn't matter you are like very uh, rich country like european country and a north american country they are sure going to some problem with the socio economic and all uh, included with the health and all problem they are going to and and also uh, we got the some report with the 166 country also they are showing the how the changes in covid uh, effect on the sustainable goal so this is a see this is a graph is like undesa report is showing the they are give the report on undesa see how the covid 19 changes the uh, all the our sustainable goal so basically we find at the like uh, especially goal 3 which is a good health and well being is very dangerous the devastating effect on health outcome this is seriously because uh, you know the health and education could be uh, easily and easy to access everyone but in this covid situation going to very crucial for the health especially in the education also this quality education see this both are also a more effect on us and all the mostly the uh, sustainable goal going to effect on so so this is again uh, some reports saying the these are the reports saying negative effect on the no party and zero hunger good health and well being and reduce inequality these are the also very sure uh, already report is saying uh, is very big problem in the our sustainable goal so we have to focus on so apart from that are talking the sustainable goal i am talking about because uh, i am being a public health and biostatics we have to some lot of uh, clinical trial and vaccine trial also so sure we find and see this is showing the like stage 1 stage 2 to stage 3 if you some motor mostly background will be then public uh, clinical trial so they know the importance of the clinical trial how the like clinical trial important for the any uh, vaccine and all those so we find out the stage 1 with that uh, uh, covid start with the stage 1 enrolled patient drop out maybe lot of patient a uh, lot of uh, person registered for the any kind of vaccine trial any kind of clinical trial but they are going to drop by drop out because they are like hesitate they are not lot of problem is coming they are not ready to come continue this is going to problem and also stage 2 again came is stage 2 so this is two way like in also uh, whatever already uh, clinical trial is going on they may be they are like uh, they are not more focus on due to like uh, due to focus on the covid vaccine trial so mostly company mostly because this is organization they are going to more focus on the vaccine trial and the covid so those remaining vaccine trial who is going on related they may be going to some delay or suspension due to because uh, emergency of the covid again is the, the same like i'm saying that they are extended of the like maybe due to peak of the covid again this is a problem in the effect uh, also not only the uh, sustainable or any other goal this is problem with the other vaccine trial uh, other ex vaccine related to health and is war so this is too, uh, you could know you could understood like 
how the uh, covid is going to more problem problematic for our society not only the socio economic and even the related to health and other education system anything so this is called uh, this is mostly only the doctor soli is also saying like just we have to collaborate each other like that's the most important this thing in this crisis situation we have to each support with the like economical condition through research their their idea their thinking we could cooperate to each other so that could be fight with this crisis and the control we could this crisis this is so see my topic is start with the it's any changes in the statistics so sure. it's too much because the you'll find it the lancet is a very reputed journal the revert back to 30 journals they are published 30 journal they are revert back due to not good uh, uh, research outcome is uh, relevant research is doing so that is also in the mostly models and prediction fail pro provide the exact situation of covid condition because maybe you'll find the mostly the italy was starting situation is italy and france was the very high lip number of cases but and after that will then shift it to america then now is coming again in the india it's like so everything like we could not say which situation where that covid could be changed and where could be the more so that's why that model is not very reliable to what are statistics people do and non statistics people do so that we have to more focus on the accurate and exact condition for the covid globally because already i told the mostly model and things are failed so we have to more focus on that and need to develop quick and access model for each country situation because you know like uh, like uh, uh, why i am coming to country situation already I told maybe now the top most uh, america and brazil and india the more highly number of cases so we have to develop model as per their demand if there any country like very few country like maybe uae is not maybe care is very less cases so we could not that model to use in cairo and that same model could use in in indian how the how the number of cases is more so have to and at the global level some country like they have the like very economical condition is good so uh, some african country they are not very good in economical condition even some south america uh, south asian country not in good in economical condition those model also could not apply in the same similar way and most important things a very huge challenge like the uh, big data is more focus and nowadays the you know the scientists research you have to more focus on the big data because we are daily taking data we are daily collecting data in uh, or organization uh, agencies daily collecting deliver report so huge role of the big data and very important to his data big data and apart from big data they have to know the some basic statistics otherwise we will not get the proper analysis of the data set okay this is a important thing the washington technology and forbes and every uh, we were saying the increase focus on data science in covid world so how the important of data science and data analysis in the covid situation why the what i why i told the big data important because the volume variety was because the big data what volume means we don't know number of cases too much high there means maximum like lakhs billion billions is, uh, cases daily is coming so that how there is no problem in the big data because in statistics we have to some restriction so huge data some software not capability some labeling not problem some model is not fit in that so big data is reducing these all the issues and variety of that data like uh, in big data uh, like we have to maybe that data is balanced not a proper pattern not a like proper uh, collection this could be the variety could cover by the big data also velocity means how the frequencies are upcoming and real time daily is going this is the uh, these are the issues coming the big data is could cover and uh, why the big data important also for analytic because see this is a faster decision they give the quick decision and without less uh, not very huge cost of that big data because there is a lot of coding lot of program machine because the sometimes machine learning technique is do the very less time to come and also always is fit for the new condition is not ready to like covid is a new condition he could applicable because this is accuracy and uh, model importance is already the big data is confirmed because we could apply in the any kind of new data sets there are new things this is a big data importance so apart from that uh, analytic we found a lot of problem in collection of data because the mostly people are working in the home at work so it's very hard to collect the data in the and also analyze the data through the lab anywhere so very hard so 
and where is serious challenge to collection of data failed and any other i already told you nobody is going to register for the clinical trial they are not going to continue for the clinical data and apart from clinical trial data and demographic data any other field work data is very hard to collect data so that's the problem the also is going to big a problem in the collection of data also and also uh, if we will not collect the proper data it going to problem with the uh, finding in any kind of indicator like that could be the economic there be trade there be health data maybe the health indicator maybe any kind of finance issues so we could not uh, tell ki what indicator will be in proper in next uh, two years or one year it's very difficult to be okay but for this crisis need we need to more quality data apart from is we not proper able to collect data but this is also important this is need to collect a very important in if it quality data so that could be the better result look at quality data why i am saying because in quality and less data will give the accurate and exact because already we in problem in the economic crisis and manpower crisis so we should the proper in the quality kind of data so lab data also delay and very difficult quality data told so uh, in we could focus on lot of um, organization focus on the online data and like uh, computer based and like this kind of and uh, an app based data or or uh, app based collection but very difficult to in some country like uh, lam lmic low lo middle income country like some african country some even south asian country even some indian country, continent very hard to proper electricity and poor network so this is data is not will proper collection also but lot of people in also collecting data then and as proper the covid data analytics we have to focus on data gathering social distancing analysis over crowding and in data visualization why going the data gathering because through data gathering the government should know the very the more is prone of the covid patient and more are the highly prevalence of the covid so government could focus on that they could tracking system they could self diagnostic diagnostic method they making they could an emergency thing could apply on that and social distancing analysis also this is this uh, also to decrease the transmission of the virus so we have to focus on like how could like how could distance like we have someone saying that 2 feet maybe someone saying 3 feet so this proper analysis could do also overcrowding analysis also you know the overcrowding also very important for analysis boils down the overcrowding is could say like in number of the overcrowding means like to more than uh, 10 uh, 10 maybe more than 50 people is anywhere that more chances to having the analysis uh, having a chance of uh, covid is Uh, this even even assumption like uh, uh, we know like more than 50 or more than 100 then uh, like uh, covid is could be spread but this is assumption because um, already I told a lot of research is not supporting so we have to proper overcrowding analysis also we uh, is 50 percent spreading chance more in a uh, 100 person like 2 200 populous uh, person or yeah, 300 person so we could also like in uh, also data visualization means where is a more problem like uh, data visualization means like healthcare factors school closure and social media how the role of so medical facilities is available or not how the demand of the patient how the demand of doctor this would also visualize of the demanding of the covid situation so total testing uh, case, cases per day confirmed cases per day uh, also pattern of the, how the pattern are testing in positive cases if we am we are testing daily and positive cases is not a very uh, not a like to less than we could say we are control if like we daily we uh, daily uh, testing pattern and also and also increasing a positive case that means there is there is a hard situation then have to look out and focus on uh, uh, work on that that's i'm saying S scale up testing compared to the scale of the outbreak and also the comparing with the what testing procedure we using that is useful or the useful for the that outbreak or not also testing performance are related to the size of population me like uh, there is a as per population we are covered to testing or not and better surveillance system also so this is in this situation i found basically three types of the uh study is basically clinical trial where where the whatever vaccine trial is related to vaccine, covid this study will cover in the whatever vaccine trial maybe lot of uh, organization lot of companies lot of research center doing on that so this is a clinical trial study basically and time series analysis because why i am saying because daily we are collecting data from february to till daily update weekly and monthly we are collecting the data so this is very important time series analysis me because it will show how the pattern how the feedback how the problem is coming so everything this so this uh, time series analysis and this factor uh, already we know the like um, uh, social distancing mask wearing and hand sanitizer these are the factor to reduce uh, proper if you use the then will not the more the covid 
situation. But uh, it's a assumption. But uh, in proper study, we could tell like uh, apart from that, this uh, other factor, age could be one factor. Maybe comorbidity. These are the factor could uh, influence and could apply on this modeling also. Already I told apart from the statistical technique, we could use the machine learning technique. Very important will be. Because there's a classification of COVID patient like the gender and post inequality and also like uh, rural urban. This is a classification of the COVID. So like in gender, age is uh, gender means is uh, female is more. Then we have to focus on the female. If any one is like a uh, urban is more, then we have to focus on the urban. So degradation also then clustering. Which group is better? Accuracy of testing. Maybe we are using the testing for the COVID. Maybe. PCR, any other lab method, which method is accurate? Like with accuracy of the testing of the which uh, method is ninety percent, eighty percent is accurate. So we have to test them. Also, K and neighbor is like very important. Like uh, any area we found it, any one person is positivity. Like uh, HIV, sorry, uh, COVID, uh, COVID percent is found the positivity. So we, uh, based on that, we could search and we could calculate and model, and we could find how many person will affect from that individual person, and also how many distance could affect that. Particular neighbor person. Before I was already told before in kind of statistics we should know the we should know the data. So data is nothing. This is numerical information of the anything. It's like number of cases, number of the cases of COVID. So data is basics of data. What is variable? This number of cases of COVID patient. This is a basically like religion. Without data importance, we could know the how, which kind of data uh, statistics, which, which kind of model we could apply. So basics, uh, I'm coming with the data sources, primary, secondary, already is like uh, first time data is primary, secondary is already like uh, we collecting a daily by daily, like uh, various agency, various research centers are collecting data, that is a secondary type. So this is again a data types, this is very important data types. Qualitative already is like, qualitative means the depression of the COVID patient, this is quality and quantity like uh, number of patient, number of COVID patient, these are. In quantitative, we have the basics too, discrete and continuous. Discrete means the exact value of the uh, number of patients, like a uh, number of COVID patients, that will be discrete. Number of doctors, that will be discrete. So they will not take would be in fraction part. And but continuous, like a BMI of the patient, height of the patient, weight of the patient. This is very important because based on this uh, uh, data, we could apply the uh, our statistical tools here model. These are the data measurement and not going to detail because everyone know. And this is procedure of the how people collect the data and bring the data and analysis and paper. So any kind of data after we have to only two way representation, tabulation and graphical. See, this is a proper breaking chain analytics. So one by this is, you know, I already told this is a proper cycle chain one by one. Like we have to control our spreading. We have to find out the contributing factor. We have to predict the analytics on the basics, high risk, and then have to work on the healthcare administration, outreach, everyone. So this is a continue and cycle process. We have to like lifetime kind of. So we do, could not stop anyone. So this is very important breaking for the chain with the based on this analytics. So this is before any kind of statistics, uh, any analysis, you have to do basic idea of the uh, basic statistic on this, uh, descriptive statistics, statistical inference, confidence interval, types of error, hypothesis testing, and p-value, statistical test on model. So I'm, this is basic descriptive statistics and inference. Descriptive statistics, simple uh, snapshot of the data, snapshot of the data, like number of cases, frequencies, graph, Simple, nothing is more than that. And we are we are not going to any kind of uh, 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 in there any clinical uh, any factor now. Simple snapshot: how many cases, how many spreading this kind of inferential statistics. In this, we find out the factor, clinical trial, importance, role of the other factors, and this in this inferential statistics we could do that. This is calculation of mean, median, mode. I am not going to detail. Basics is there given. Again, this is uh, important. These are the mean, median, mode. This is already I told why the measure of data is important because nominal, ordinal, ordinal ratio. Because based on this, we could apply the, this kind of the uh, uh, frequencies, like uh, descriptive statistics. If our data is the uh, uh, like nominal, ordinal, like mode, you could apply any kind of data. But median apply only the ordinal interval ratio data. And arithmetic mean, I mean apply only the interval ratio data. 
and apart from this in this i told you this is two important variable independent and dependent variable so dependent variables is always outcome so simple number like covid uh, positivity this is our outcome and having the covid positivity behind whatever factor influencing uh, having the outcome that is known as the independent factor yeah independent variable that could be the uh, factor score factor predictors these are the basic difference between the dependent and independent so dependent is always outcome maybe like a disease maybe like a past maybe a number of accident these are the outcome and behind that whatever a factor influence that is independent factor and cofactors like that this is a population and sample this is basic idea everyone maybe know see i'm coming this okay this is a statistical inference idea like what is statistical inference sometimes like we have the huge population in the population of the, the our area but it's not possible to put the all the population due to uh, time lag yeah this situation is very hard to take the time because we could not wait the whole population up uh, situation so we put the some sample uh, that is sample is like this is whole population of coronavirus i choose the some sample from the corona and based on this based on this population we going to see the idea about the what the situation of the this population so this way of method is known as the statistical inference simple so based on the uh, sample we will tell the idea about the population that is way of the simple it is statistical inference this is a point and interval and estimate confidence interval uh, point interval estimate simple what uh, already i told we estimate the value of the parameter already I told in this like already I told see put say this this like this is a population like in this age and bp of this space maybe coronavirus uh, is the i don't know which age group is more in coronavirus in any kind of like a, a which group is in this population but through sample we calculate which age group is a more so this is basic idea of the statistical inference so sometimes we calculate single value sometimes we calculate the two value so single value is known as the point estimate and two value is calculated as the interval estimate what is the confidence interval confidence interval after calculating the estimating value of the sample of the sample for the it will show the uh, like a range of the two value like this our uh, estimate of the value could follow in this uh, between upper limit and lower limit this is the formula of the calculating because everything statistics is uh, discussed only the mean and proportion so basics the null hypothesis alter uh, before doing the any kind of statistics have to think about the hypothesis so hypothesis is like a basics idea of the any statement of the anything like that see this is a, i uh, i coming with the uh, i uh, if we want to test the null hypothesis that the average age of the covid testing the student in kerala city is the 22 years so this is am our assumption like our null hypothesis is a 22 years okay so 22 years so this is our hap null hypothesis and this null uh, opposite of null hypothesis will be the alternative hypothesis this is two tail so this is a basic idea of that two tail and one tail if condition is one like greater than less than that will be one tail otherwise if not equal that will be a two tail uh, and maybe timing so this is a situation of the type one error type two error so see this is we have the decision like we have the uh, through any testing found the covid we have the uh covid but reporting not showing but we have the covid this is big mistake means this is very hard so this is known as a type 1 error and if someone is not not, not showing a no covid maybe this is a correct in apart we have the survey, we have the report uh, we have the like uh, covid and not showing report is covid is correct but sometimes you have the uh, no covid this is no covid but someone saying the like report is saying that we have the covid so this is a type 2 error this is a minor mistake this is a basic difference between the type 1 error and type 2 error so significant value we have the like based on this we check the like uh, how the our reject our null hypothesis and accept i'm going to detail this is a procedure of the how to collect the null hypothesis alternative and all those things see this is a data uh, any data will come then parametric non parametric so this is a overview of the parametric and non parametric because the uh, this is a big huge data set Uh, then the mostly uh, model will be applied in the parameter because the sample size is always greater than 30 this is compare between the pair and non pair test i'm not going to do. so this is a very important table i basically just to miss two table is not to <laughs> worry about that's two minute uh, more 
so this is i'm comparing the uh, important of the data and uh, how the i use the example the covid patient uh, so we one, one by one i'm coming so this basics if any we found the relationship between two continuous variable so our dependent variable would be continuous also and agar if our uh, independent variable is continuous then which model will apply so will you apply the correlation coefficient so what is uh, like our uh, uh, could be the research topic to to find the relationship between the pmi bmi and age of covid patient because these are the both are the continuous variable then could apply the uh, uh, correlation this is a very important what i'm saying the based on the model uh, based on the data uh, characteristics we have to apply the those model otherwise wrong that's why i have told to like focus on the uh, classification and measurement of data so these both data set is dependent and independent the continuous then we have to apply the correlation coefficient and this uh, one and bit two ordinal means both dependent and independent will be the what data set and ordinal then we can apply the experiment blank correlation what is that to find the relationship between the social distance and covid distance so how long how they affect the social distance like 10 meter the area 2 feet 3 feet 4 feet that is very important okay 3 feet is more for, for like tonia like for 4 feet is more important this is test for the strength of association between two categorical variable in this association between two category means uh, in apply the c dependent will be categorical and independent also categorical uh, then chi square will apply this is to find the strength of association between gender and covid status so this will find that in any association between uh, like uh, gender to having the covid status that is apply the chi square and also the two uh, next test for the difference between the same variable from the different population maybe uh, dependent in scale in continuous and other is independent variable uh, uh, categorical maybe like you have the two different group so we want to check which group is more prone now uh, which group is more uh, hazard of the having the of uh, covid patient so what i am doing so to compare the hg level between the male and female of covid patient see hg hemoglobin level is always a continuous that's i'm saying sometimes so that's and i uh, will find the association with the categorical variable that's why i am applying the independent test otherwise we go uh, uh, over the chi square and again uh, like a pre post test uh, everyone may be like we have vaccine trial is going on and we want to check the same population before uh, drug giving and after drug what effect on any outcome so that is apply on the prt test to check the weight of before and after covid drug treatment covid patient means we are doing the any vaccine trial and want to check the any weight uh, problem with the uh, covid patient uh, after that drug test will could apply in this uh, prt test this is a uh, like uh, uh one uh, one this is a simple if our group is more than two group and single one factor then apply the one over so the continuous could be dependent and categorical with our independent independent variable so to test the dep depressed level of covid patient between the more than two age group okay we want to check the what the age group is more which group is like adolescent age group more yeah adult age group more yeah like uh yeah 60 plus yeah 50 plus age group which is very useful for the one way Uh, again, is the like I mistake I did, you know? Maybe here could be the more than two factor could be more than two. Then two way, you know. Means test the uh, depression level uh, and sleeping status of COVID patient between more than two age group. Means we are seeing the what a sleeping sleeping pattern and depression level of the COVID patient. Maybe change so in various age group. Now so test the how the change in the uh, again we coming the comparing the. one predictor outcome is like a dependent variable is a continuous and uh, independent variable could be the anything so like maybe continuous maybe categorical maybe nominal maybe this so we'll find out the simple linear regression to find the role of hand sanitization and spreading of covid so this through we could apply the simple uh, again and simple in multiple linear regression our continuous outcome again will be the con continuous and other multiple what are basic difference single and multiple or factor could be more than one that is a multiple simple to find the role of hand sanitization social distancing and mask cover in the spreading of the covid patient so this is a multiple and again final is like a, finally to in simple logistics if our outcome is will be binary so that will apply the same multiple logistic reason it means to find the role of hand sanitization social distancing and mask converting spreading a covid yes or no like covid yes no simple here are the covid yes 
yeah like covid patient only here we our outcome is the binary so this is a basics idea of the our basic statistics uh, uh, maybe mostly a lot of people know but i want to give the some basic overview on that so how the important dependent and independent variable uh, this is uh, my in uh, from my side this is my uh, uh, my son two years like uh, always i'm around him like a big questions so always asking me what are doing okay thanks dr wala and thank most you. welcome question thank you dear professor uh, it's very important um, lecture you know when you talk about statistics and mathematics uh, all researcher uh, if they will not um, qualified in this point uh, it will be so miss so yeah yeah that's what uh, actually you, you you do the very important um, uh, um, critical work in any paper or any publication so without a quality of um, a true statistics statistically interpretation of our results or our data no no benefit for any work right yes 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 so i yeah. would uh, like to welcome any question so anyone have question yes that, that's why i skip the mathematical point na that's why i only focus on the only theory things and i, I know that to, uh, say hello to your uh, small uh, son kids <laughs> kids <laughs> Okay, you can stop uh, stop sharing your screen now, please. Okay, thank you. Any question, most welcome. Okay, and uh, uh, any questions, um, please uh, ask uh, Professor Doctor uh, Akech. Uh, I I know it's a very important part, and I, I from my side, I I am pleased to have uh, a great stickly interpretation from you and big data. And please. Uh, sure. Uh, sure. Sure. Oh yes, sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm most welcome to anyone. Like I'm not saying whom or not is not able to understand. So it should be they ask they could discuss or not mean not maybe like I'm you could send my number and my email ID. They could discuss apart from anyone could ask me any question related to statistics, how to interpret and how could model develop. It could be very easy to do that. Okay, maybe I know that's a is a problem with the statistics. Lot of people don't want to be like so, but I. I'll tell in their way, so not to worry about that. And apart from that, they could uh, mail me any query related to. I'm happy to. So I am now. I I, I will not worry <laughs> because you are <laughs> here. yes beside me. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so yes, much. Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank uh, you, uh, you doctor. Thank uh, you. Please stop sharing your screen to can yeah. welcome uh, um, uh, our next speaker. Yeah, yes, yeah. You didn't stop your screen yet. Yes, thank you. Yeah. You didn't stop yes. Okay, I will stop it from my side. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Thank you. So, uh, Doctor uh, uh, Rafael is with us now, and I will uh, start presenting uh, here. Uh, good morning, dear professor. I know it's uh, uh, nearly nine, uh, no, eight, uh, past half uh, a.m. in Brazil, right? So, right. So sorry, oh my God. We walk, uh, we walk <laughs> so early. <laughs> I know in Brazil today, uh, uh, and this week is holidays, right? Oh, I am working from home and with a small kid. So I have been awake for some time already. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> <So funny. laughs> uh, I'm so happy because uh, you accept my invitation, uh, and I am uh, so pleased to have uh, you, uh, in spite of uh, your kids and your work. So I will, uh, I will introduce you. Just a minute. Um, Dr. Rafael uh, is an associate professor at Biochemistry and Immunology Department at the University of uh, uh, UFMG, Brazil. She has graduated in pharmacy in 2005 at UFMG and got her PhD in chemistry and chemical biology at the, same, uh, at the University of California, San Francisco, 2010. Then she did a postdoc at the University of uh, Sao Paulo, supervised by Adriano, Professor Dr. Adriano, in 2018. She was a visiting researcher at the Center of uh, 
Her research interests are focused on drug design, enzymology, structural biology, especially toward development of parasitic cysteine protease inhibitor. Her awards include uh, Royal UNESCO ABC for Women in Science 2017, category chemistry, and Royal UNESCO for Women in Science International Rising Talent 2018. So, uh, Please, I will stop my uh, screen sharing and uh, you can share your screen now. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation to be here and to participate in this symposium. Uh, and thank you also for the introduction. So I'll share my screen with you. Um, it's it's showing uh, did you stop sharing your screen because it's showing to me like uh, uh I, options I, that seem I, from I already, another i already stopped sharing my screen and uh, okay and the, you know um, okay. okay now it's showing here i think there was just a, a little bit of a delay to show okay it, it, uh, you but so uh, it's a pleasure to talk today about the rational design of uh, MPRO inhibitors to treat uh, COVID-19. MPRO is the main protease from uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about, not only about this target, but also about uh, drug design. Before I start, uh, before I start presenting this, um, this team, I just would like to tell you where I am. So uh, we are, I'm speaking from Brazil, a huge country, and I am in the state of Minas Gerais, over here, in the city of Belo Horizonte. So that's where our uh, university is located. Here are some pictures. So just to welcome you in case uh, you come to Brazil sometime. Uh, it will be uh, great to have you around. But so, um, first of all, I would like to say that uh, right now, lots of people want to uh, see uh, a drug for uh, COVID, right? We see that this disease is devastating. It's causing uh, thousands of deaths. And um, it's stopping uh, the economy from uh, several countries, from most countries in the world. So people are really anxious and uh, everybody wants to uh, have a drug as fast as possible. But I like here is that developing drugs is a very difficult process and it's very expensive. Usually this process takes about 12 to 15 years. We have several stages of uh, working inside a lab to show that this drug uh, works in, uh, against cells, against animal models. There are lots of safety tests here. And uh, only after all of these tests and several years of works, we are usually able to move to clinical trials when um, the drug is actually evaluated in people. So this process is complicated and it's very hard to suddenly have a drug for a new disease. So how can we discover new drugs? Now that we have COVID-19 uh, as a disease we want to, find, to fight, what are the strategies? First of all, we can have drug repurposing, which is when you find a new application for a drug that already exists. And the other strategy is to develop a new drug. In the case of drug repurposing, it has some great advantages. It is cheaper and it's much faster than developing a new drug. And that happens because you can skip lots of these stages here. 
because we already know uh, how safe the drug is. It's already in the market to treat another disease. So we know what kind of side effects it has. Uh, we know about doses that uh, humans can tolerate well. And that allows to start very quickly to move into these uh, trials in humans. And uh, this is going on for COVID. I will give you some examples. So this is strategy is quite nice from uh, some points, but it's, it has a downside, downside, which is the very limited possibilities. Since we are evaluating only the drugs that are in the market, we have a set of like 2,000 compounds to evaluate. Um, so maybe uh, we will not find a drug that's already there and that will work well for uh, COVID. Here are some examples of these efforts to repurpose uh, drugs for COVID-19. Uh, there is really a lot going on and it's hard to keep track of everything. So I'm just selecting some examples, uh, which the uh, New York Times compiled as uh, cases which are not promising or that look promising. As some of the non-promising examples, we have uh, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. Uh, this is a very interesting example because there were some initial trials in which uh, this drug seem, seemed effective to treat COVID. But afterwards, we saw that um, it's not, they are not working well. They don't bring any improvement um, on the treatment of the patients and there are even some evidences which show more mortality in patients that take these drugs. So despite a lot of advertisement and uh, the fact that some of some presidents like the US president and the Brazilian president have been um, encouraging the use of these drugs, they don't look promising for COVID. And the uh, WHO has stopped uh, the clinical trials with these drugs. Another example, uh, concerns uh, lopinavir and ritonavir, which are drugs developed to treat uh, HIV. But uh, in clinical trials, they also, uh, the performance was also disappointing. So they are not considered uh, promising anymore. On the cases that look more promising, we have uh, rendesivir, which was um, authorized to be applied um, since uh, June uh, in the US by the FDA. And we also have uh, dexamethasone, which is an steroid. And um, it, it was shown to reduce mortality in uh, COVID-19 patients. So some drugs uh, are helping in the treatment. There are more examples, but I didn't bring all of them here. So they look somewhat promising to help in the treatment, but we don't have so far any drug which is recommended as a specific drug, which is very efficient to, uh, against COVID-19. So how can we have more possibilities to discover drugs? That's if we start developing a new drug for COVID-19. And in that case, we can work with uh, different kinds of uh, therapeutics. We may work with natural products, with uh, synthetic drugs, and also with biopharmaceuticals, which would be proteins uh, used uh, to treat the disease. The disadvantage, as I already highlighted, is that to develop a drug is very slow and it has a very high cost. But on the positive side, we have lots of possibilities here because there are millions of compounds that we can explore and we can uh, uh, develop even more compounds than the compounds that are known and synthesized already. 
And another thing that I want to highlight uh, a little later on my talk is that we may also develop drugs that work not only against COVID-19, but also against other diseases uh, caused by coronavirus. So I want to tell you a bit about how structural biology can be used in this process. Uh, structural biology is a key component in rational drug design. And in this process, we use the structures uh, of proteins to find um, molecules that bind to these proteins. And here we have the protein data bank, which is the uh, main uh, database for protein structures. Anytime you want to publish uh, a paper reporting the structure of a protein, you have to deposit uh, this structure in the PDB. So it's a really important database and it has over 160,000 uh, structures. And once we have these structures, we can develop uh, structure-based uh, strategies for target-based drug discovery. So in general terms, this is how uh, it works. We already know which is the virus that causes the disease. And we also know uh, its genome. It was sequenced uh, very fast. And uh, we know that some proteins are essential for the virus. So we know that these proteins are important and we know their structure. And once we have this information, we can use computer programs to screen thousands or even millions of molecules and to find out which of them would bind better to this target. So here we have uh, a simple example with uh, a few molecules and here this molecule would have a good fit in the uh, active site of the protein. So we have hypotheses that were built uh, based on computer simulations and we can test these molecules uh, in the lab. And in the case of SARS-CoV-2, uh, we know its life cycle. We know that the virus has to bind to a um, human cell receptor to allow its entry. And then there is the process of uncoating. Um, the content of the virus is released into the uh, human cell. The proteins will be translated. Uh, then, a big or two big uh, polyproteins will be uh, translated and it's necessary to cleave these polyproteins to generate the viral proteins. So, uh, and then there is like the need to assemble the proteins, the virus has to transcribe uh, its gen, um, its generic material so that the virus will be able to uh, maturate and to be released. And um, since we know this life cycle, there are points that we can target. For example, some people work in uh, inhibiting this uh, recognition between the virus. Uh, excuse me, can you hear me well? Yes, uh, yes, yes, just because I... I so, sorry for interruption, dear doctor, I hear you completely. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to make sure. Um, but so here we have um, the process of entry, which can be uh, disrupted. Some people work uh, preventing this uh, transcription. And what we do in our group, in several groups, is to work on the main protease which is, <clears throat> sorry, the main protease is important to release the viral, uh, viral proteins. So that protein is called uh, MPRO, which stands for main protease. And um, it's essential for the virus replication due to the fact that the virus needs uh, these proteins that will only be produced if MPRO is active. So if we have uh, MPRO inhibitors, 
this process will be uh, also inhibited. And a very interesting point about this protein is that it's very conserved uh, among several coronavirus. And that includes uh, the virus that caused uh, the SARS-CoV uh, epidemic uh, in 2003 and uh, MERS. We already had um, information and some starting points to find um, inhibitors for MPRO because inhibitors for similar proteins have been developed. And in the same way, if we think now about targeting these proteins, the compounds that are developed may be effective for other diseases, even against a new coronavirus infection, which may uh, arise in the future. So this is a very interesting target. And the strategy we are adopting is to have the target structure for um, MPRO, which has this uh, shape like a heart. It's a dimer. Here we have the dimer bound to an inhibitor. And we are also using a database of about a thousand molecules which we got from collaborators in applying the technique of molecular docking, which allow us to predict how each of these uh, molecules would bind to the protease active site. And uh, based on these binding modes and on the interactions between the inhibitor and the protein, we can select compounds which will be evaluated uh, to determine their potency and potential, potentially new protein structures bound with these inhibitors. And uh, to adopt this strategy, um, we are taking advantage of the fact that the structures of MPRO have been determined in a really incredible speed. So um, we had papers in uh, very important scientific uh, journals, Nature and Science, and these papers were submitted for publication in February. So the disease was reported uh, in the end of December uh, 2019, and in early February, there were already uh, structures of MPRO being sent for publications. And uh, again, this took advantage of the fact that the researchers already knew um, inhibitors for the MPRO of SARS-CoV. So what can we learn from these structures? Right now we have more than a hundred structures of MPRO in complex with different ligands. And if we look at the structure of uh, one inhibitor bound to this protein, we can look at the molecular details and we can learn uh, at which, which is the region of the protein which recognizes inhibitors and also which, inter which interactions this inhibitor makes with the protein. But we can do more than that because as I said, we have uh, more than a hundred structures. So we employed a program called uh, Napoli which is freely available if you want to use, and it was developed uh, by our group and another group uh, at UFMG. And with this program, we can analyze a whole set uh, of structures of the same protein bound to different ligands. And we can divide these ligands into groups uh, based on the way that they interact with the protein, and we can identify through a statistical analysis, which interactions are more common for these inhibitors. And that's important to help us to then select uh, molecules, which could also uh, be good and pro inhibitors. And um, so we had all of these structures and we also had several collaborators from different, uh, four different universities in Brazil, and they already had their chemical libraries, which we could uh, evaluate 
in computer simulations. And this has some advantages for us. It's a low cost process because the compounds are already synthesized or at least most of them are already synthesized. They are uh, quickly available because they are either on stock or the chemists know how to synthesize them. And uh, they also allow efficient optimization because since it's familiar chemistry to these uh, groups, once we find the inhibitor, they can synthesize similar molecules more quickly and we can uh, optimize these molecules. So where are we in this process? We have used, we have chosen one structure of the protease and we did the docking with uh, more than a thousand compounds and we have selected a hundred of them for experimental evaluation. The assays with the enzyme will pretty soon be tested at the University of California, San Diego uh, in a process uh, coordinated by Dr. Uh, Anthony uh, Donogu. And we also have evaluation of the antiviral activity at our university. So hopefully in the near future, we will know which of these compounds are active and then we can uh, think about optimizing them, again, using structure-based drug design and uh, the do molecular docking technique. So uh, this work is being uh, undertaken at the Laboratory of Molecular Modeling and Drug Design, which is uh, coordinated by me. We have, um, students from undergraduate students to master's PhD students and also a postdoctoral associate. And in this work, um, we had mainly the involvement of Dr. Luciana Santos and the PhD student Rafael Rocha to select the compounds. So I would like to thank them, to thank all of the collaboration, collaborators for this work and also to thank you for your attention and for the invitation to give this, give this talk. Uh, and with that, uh, I would be happy to discuss the results and to answer uh, any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. Uh, uh, very interesting um, uh, lecture and presentation. And I hope uh, this project will be soon in marketing, uh, in market for, uh, for use and for um, uh, benefit for all. So uh, uh, I would welcome to any question for Professor Dr. Rafael. So please um, type your question in chat room or um, or you can ask it. So I have a question from Dr. Hisham. So please uh, uh, ask your question. Thank you very much for your very interesting and clear lecture. And you pointed out uh, several examples in an excellent way. So my question is, uh, do you think if we compile combinatorial chemistry, chemoinformatics and the docking, this could be the fastest solution to find uh, small molecules which you could help in the treatment of COVID-19? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, I do think that would be an interesting strategy. So uh, from the moment we find some initial hits, right? I think that uh, combinatorial chemistry could be applied, especially taking into account the fact that, uh, as I said, the chemists, uh, the chemists already uh, handle the chemistry concerning this compound, so they could apply combinatorial chemistry uh, to synthesize analogs uh, of these molecules. And we could also prioritize, like when we think about combinatorial chemistry, there could be a huge number of uh, molecules to synthesize, but uh, combined with molecular docking, we could prioritize some of those uh, for synthesis. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, dear doctor. Uh, so, uh, any, anyone have another question? So, 
so uh, uh, thank you so much for joining us at early morning and thank you for thank this you for this interesting uh, and very valuable lecture and uh, i wish you the best for uh, upcoming research to, uh, to reach this um, uh, um, to some mark soon uh, uh, thank you i would like to um, welcome professor dr fukami to give um, a short talk about GSPS. Uh, so please, uh, Dr. Fukami. Good afternoon, dear officer. So, you hear me? So, you are hearing me? So, the program uh, has been changed some. Something. Professor Dr. Ashraf uh, Abadi couldn't join so that uh, I will explain our JSPS. Uh, so <laughs> I'm very sorry, the, not uh, the, the theme of Corona, but uh, perhaps uh, from this uh, opportunity, you can make some research collaboration or something so that uh, I will explain our JSPS. So, can you see? Yes, dear professor, I see it clearly. You return now? The now slide show? Yes, please. Is now stop uh, slideshow, please. Oh, okay. okay, it's good. Okay. 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 I will explain our JSPS postdoctoral fellowships, a joint research project and programs. Uh, I will explain JSPS Japan Science uh, uh, Japan uh, Society for the promotion of sci for science, our mission and what we do. Uh, it was established 1932 with an imperial endowment. We have five pillars. The first is create world-class knowledge in diverse fields. The second, foster the next generation of researchers to challenge to create new genres of knowledge. The third, improve the education research functions that leverage the strengths of universities, etc. The fourth, build the robust international research base. The fifth, build the comprehensive academic information analysis base. Uh, we support curiosity-driven research researches in all disciplines, a full range of creative and pioneering research from basic to applied field across humanities, social science, and natural sciences. And, uh, this slide uh, shows the structure of the organizations related to Japan's national science and technology policies. On the government level, the Council for uh, Science, Technology, and Innovation, or CSTI, this one, uh, is established with, in the cabinet office. It oversees uh, the na national science and technology policies. It used to be called CSTP, and the amendment came in two polls as May 19th, 19th, 2014. Its new mandate is added, which is to deal with the issues related to the de development of environment to promote innovation in addition 
to the promotion of science and technology. The Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, or next, uh, this one, for short, uh, in Japan's core ministry in the area of science and technology. It has two funding agencies. One is JSPS, uh, the, and the other is the Japan Science and Technology Agency, uh, in short, uh, JST. Here you can see the contrast in the philosophies of these two agencies. JSPS takes a curiosity-driven approach. Our fundamental objective is to promote basic research by answering the needs of scientists. Uh, JSPS's typical style of funding is to issue an open call in all fields, including the natural and the social sciences and humanities, then projects are selected by peer review based on, the, uh, uh, on their scientific merit. Uh, JSPS operates in, in close contact with the universities, so fostering young scientists is one of our specialties. On the other hand, uh, JST uh, takes strategy-driven approach or a top-down approach that comes directly from the national strategy. Typically, therefore, JST manages large-scale research projects in uh, strategically chosen fields or topics. And uh, this is the uh, part is JSPS. It is Japan's co-funding agency. It places high value on both research autonomy and research diversity. Uh, what does JSPS support from basic to applied research conducted based on the free ideas of researchers? Uh, covers the entire spectrum of academic fields, including humanities, social sciences, and natural sciences. The application selection is a bottom-up approach invite applications through open calls, uh, com competitive funding evaluates through peer review, and fair, uh, fair and transparent screening select based on academic merit. Uh, uh, the, our JSPS international program is focusing on place or mobilizing the researchers aimed to establish robust international cooperative networks. The first one, supporting international joint research and seminar. I will explain more the bilateral programs and core to core programs. The second one, providing platforms for international training opportunities for young researchers all over the world. The, this one is a hub meeting with Nobel Roy. The third one is inviting researchers uh, from abroad to Japan. Now we have a postdoctoral fellowship for overseas researchers and invitation fellowships for uh, research in Japan. And also the Greek fellowship, it is constructed by the already the uh, who has the experience of the JSPS program. And the fourth is sending young Japanese researchers overseas. And the fifth is the support globalization of universities uh, support through JSPS overseas offices. This is the number of researchers exchanged under, under JSPS program, a little bit old, the fiscal year 2018. For example, the, the, uh, from uh, Egypt to Japan is uh, 41 persons. For example, the, from India, 247 researchers to Japan. And also the, uh, from, from 
I don't know, from, uh, there is no one from Brazil. Uh, Brazil is 13 members, 13 members, uh, 13 researchers to Japan. And the Japanese researchers to uh, go to uh, Egypt, uh, 21 researchers in 2018, and in to India, 177 researchers. And also the, to uh, Brazil, uh, 31 researchers. And we have JSTPS overseas offices, 10 overseas offices, and uh, one advisor in Sao Paulo. Uh, for example, the the in Middle Eastern and uh, North African countries, our JSPS Cairo research station uh, to cover. Uh, for example, for India, JSPS Bangkok office uh, covered India and Bangladesh and also the many South, South Asian countries. Uh, our mission is uh, liaise with overseas counterpart research promotion organizations, and we also hold the symposium under the, the Cairo office or uh, Bangkok office or the uh, San Paulo, and support alumni networks formed among former participants in JSPS programs, and disseminate information on scientific trends in Japan and support overseas activities of Japanese universities. Uh, for Cairo office, it was established 1984. The main function is to collect and distribute information that promote intellectual cooperation across the boundaries, especially between Japan and Middle Eastern countries, to provide a kind of support for Japanese researchers visiting Cairo with the aim of conducting uh, their researches. I am the director and we have uh, services organizing a seminar every two months, every one month. Each seminar invites Japanese or Egyptian specialists and delivers the lecture on various themes. Now we are doing online providing Japanese books as well as Arabic and Western language books for uh, public reading to researchers and students stay in Cairo. Unfortunately, under this con con uh, uh, situation, the old students are go going back to uh, Japan. The, the, this is the robust international cooperative networks uh, since establishment in 19, uh, 1971, JSPS has continuously supported the international advancement of scientific research in Japan. Currently, JSPS has overseas offices and uh, locations around the world, along with international networks comprising about 19 counterpart organizations and some 26,000 past and present JSPS fellows. And also we have 18 alumni associations, not only the uh, Egypt, uh, India has also the alumni association, uh, already 388 uh, more uh, joined. And uh, this is the online networks uh, by JSPS researchers. JSPS Net is a social network service that supports researchers by facilitating network building and encourages knowledge uh, sharing between them. Uh, the, any researcher can join. And uh, feature, fe uh, the, our features, the friend, friend connection, create community, event page, uh, or, or uh, the researchers, my research life, seeking early career researchers, so that uh, please join these uh, uh, online networks. Uh, perhaps uh, anyone can join. 
So please access here. And also mm, the, our JSPS homepage uh, that can provide this. So uh, please uh, uh, see the JSPS network online. And I will explain research collaboration. First of all, uh, the bilateral cooperation and next, the core to core program. The bilateral cooperation is the purpose is to promote and support academic cooperation between highly qualified Japanese and overseas, overseas researchers. Uh, practice is equal or cross cost sharing for implementing cooperative activities and uh, the, for the support joint research and joint seminar. I will explain with uh, Egypt and also uh, with India and with uh, uh, Brazil. Uh, for Egypt, the, uh, the STDF, Science and Technology Development Fund, is the, the organization for the counterpart agency. Uh, this is a number the, 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 to be selected and also the uh, total number of research uh, uh, for joint research, especially uh, in Egypt. And these uh, programs are selected and now going on or already uh, this is the going project and already the finished project. And also the joint seminar is a number of like that. And this is for India. For India is a Department of Science and Technology and Indian Council of Historical Research and Indian Council of Social Science Research is the organization uh, the, to collaborate. And actually, the many numbers of the researches are selected. Uh, these are ongoing projects uh, uh, under the uh, bilateral project. To compare Egypt, so many the project is going on. The, uh, around 50 projects are going on. Uh, research is also, these are uh, seminars. Uh, for Brazil, Brazilian Federal Agency for Support and Evaluation of Graduate Education is a cooperative uh, organization uh, with a bilateral project. And these projects are going on, and also the, the upper one is finished. And this is the Egyptian seminars, like that. And uh, we can uh, the, accept also the bilateral cooperation partnership uh, without the core agency. Bilateral joint project and seminars open to agencies of countries in diplomatic relations, regardless or of whether or not they have an MOU with JSPS. So, uh, next one is the Creating Research Hubs. Uh, the name is Core to Core Program. Please uh, seek about JSPS, Core to Core program. Core to core program is consisted of uh, the, uh, the uh, more than three countries: Japan and India and uh, Egypt, or Japan and Brazil and uh, Egypt, or the four, four or five or six countries also. And we have uh, advanced advanced research networks and uh, sorry. Uh, uh, and Asia Africa uh, Science Platform. We, we have two schemes. The A is targeted any country in the world, 
objective is to promote international collaboration in cutting edge fields by creating world class research hubs. Foster new generations of talented young researchers in Japan and uh, other countries. Grants up to uh, US dollars 160,000 per year. The partner institutions are required to cover their own expenses. Uh, project, project duration is five years. The other scheme is B, is AC African Science Platforms targeted Asia and or African countries regions. Objective is Japanese research institutions take the lead in building research hubs and fostering young researchers to contribute to Asian African region. Grants for up to uh, 70,000 uh, dollars uh, per year uh, from JSPS. The project is duration three years. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Egypt has only, uh, now J Egypt has only Asia African uh, science platforms, uh, the B, uh, scheme B, and these are ongoing uh, and also the project. And we have uh, to invite researchers from abroad. The, this is very, how to say, the uh, very individual researchers not for the, the organization or something. We have uh, four meetings and uh, fellowships program to Japan. The whole meeting uh, with Nobel laureates, uh, especially for young researchers, the, the master course or doctor course students, uh, give opportunities for excellent PhD students and young researchers in the Asia Pacific and Africa to engage in interdisciplinary discussion with Nobel lawyers and their own peers. Uh, foster future scientific leader, leaders in the region, cultivate participants with uh, wider perspectives and deepen their knowledge through uh, various programs with the laureates uh, and their peers. The uh, 11th of meeting, unfortunately, perhaps it is the, the, the postponed because of Corona. Uh, so, but uh, we will uh, plan a next, next Nobel laureates uh, uh, meeting. So please apply it also. And uh, this is uh, the, uh, the first form. And also we have uh, the, uh, the fellowship programs to Japan. If you go to JSPS page, there are many programs. Uh, for example, one uh, the postdoctoral fellowship to the, the very Nobel laureate class uh, researchers. We have so many schemes, so please, uh, go to our page and uh, please negotiate with the Japanese professor. If you uh, don't know the Japanese professor on, in, on your field, uh, please ask me or the Bangkok office or something. Uh, we will uh, introduce some Japanese professor, uh, appropriate uh, Japanese professor to you. And also we have a long back dissertation PhD program. Our aim is giving opportunities for researchers in Asia, Africa, or other specified countries who wish to obtain PhD degree from Japanese universities by submitting dissertations. Uh, approximately 25 fellows are newly selected every year. Fellows are invited every year to visit their Japanese host researchers for three years. Their host Japanese researchers are also allowed to visit the candidates to uh, their countries. Eligibility holds a full-time position as a researcher at the university or research institution in his or her home countries under age 45. Uh, fellowship tenure is maximum three years. And the uh, other one is a bridge fellowship program. Object is 
to create sustained strengthen research uh, networks with Japanese colleagues. Especially this is uh, the, uh, the person who already gets uh, some JSPS fellowship. And also in India, uh, already the alumni association had uh, uh, established. So if you have any question, uh, you can ask the Indian alumni association also. And we, uh, the Egyptian uh, alumni association, uh, the Professor Tantori and the Professor Ga are joined. Uh, this is our office. Uh, thank you for your kind of attention. Thank you so much, dear professor, for your presentation about GSBS. And it's yeah. my uh, honor to be a GSBS uh, Hope Fellow 2017. Uh, uh, yes, I, 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 uh, when I returned in 2017 from uh, Japan, from Tokyo, uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, I encouraged uh, one of my um, colleagues in the same department in NRC to uh, register and to admit his uh, application in the next year. And he, he successfully traveled in the next year. I attended the ninth hope meeting and he attended the tenth hope meeting. But for uh, sadly, this hope meeting for this year is postponed because of yeah. 19. And by the way, I, uh, I get an invitation for uh, uh, postponed uh, COVID-19 12, uh, 12 um, uh, hope meeting this year. Uh, to attend the ceremony of uh, dinner uh, with um, with the new home meeting fellow, but uh, sadly it's postponed. It. So I'm looking forward to the next year um, GSP's hope meeting, uh, and uh, I encourage all uh, young uh, young scientists and PhD uh, excellent students with um, strong CV to apply. It's so easy. Application is not complicated at all. But it need um, to be patient and to need to be um, qualified for uh, this um, uh, so interesting program. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you, thank you so much, Professor Fukami. And if Dr. Ibrahim Tantawi is the president of uh, GSB SAAE alumni with us, and Professor Dr. Regat uh, Kadi uh, uh, is with us now, I I want to I would like to give um, a talk. So Professor Dr. Gad. Uh, welcome to uh, over you, Dr. Ged. You hear me, Dr. Ged? So, Dr. Ibrahim, are you here? Dr. Ibrahim. So let's uh, let's uh, uh, introduce uh, tomorrow at lectures still. Uh, Dr. Gad or Dr. Ibrahim. Dr. Ibrahim. Dr. Ibrahim is us now. Yes, and I'm all the time. Okay, I know, I, I see you. So, uh, I would like to give uh, a small uh, word to, before I close the day uh, and introduce the uh, second, uh, uh, the next day uh, lectures. So, would you please give some words? Me? If you don't mind. If you if you, if you haven't, it's okay. I, will, I can I can share the presentation as a um, PowerPoint for tomorrow, and the announcement for our speaker tomorrow. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, I okay, think, uh, okay, okay. Thank like you. So just a minute. I will I will I will, I will, I will uh, share my screen now. So tomorrow, uh, uh, our fourth day of um, our um, symposium. So tomorrow, the first speaker is Dr. Felix Past. Uh, he is an associate professor at Central University of Punjab, India, and the PhD from Japan. He is a mixed fellow. Uh, he is former NSF fellow at Friday Harbor Lab, Washington, USA. And he is fellow at Marine Biological Association, UK. Uh, he, is, he is also fellow at uh, ZMTP, 
premium uh, Germany and expedition scientist at Indian uh, Antarctic Mission 2016 till 2017, elected National Core Committee representative of Indian National Young Academy of Science and senior uh, science writer of uh, Ibis uh, Cyclist and advocate of low carbon footprint lifestyle. The next thing is correct with me, <laughs> that, so I can't introduce myself. So uh, um, the third speaker will be uh, uh, Dr. Mashoaru Sinu, and he, uh, he uh, apologized to be live with us. So he will send the recorded video for uh, his uh, presentation tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Sinu is a professor, doctor in nanotechnology and dean of the graduate school in the Celebrity Science and Engineering and Health System, Okuyama University. Uh, uh, he awards uh, many awards uh, since 1993, award of, of Okuyama Foundation of Science and Technology, award of Force Pio Business uh, Competition Japan Osaka Chambers of Com Commerce and Industry, uh, 2004 uh, and the awards of um, Pinchwar Business Startup from Academic Space and Center of Cooperation between Industries and Government Academy 2005. Awards of Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, Business I 2005. And awards of excellent achievement in the research and faculty of engineering, Okayama University uh, 2009. And uh, uh, our um, last um, last uh, last um, speaker will be Dr. Amr Sayed, uh, but he, 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 he uh, his slide is uh, still uh, under um, uh, editing. So uh, tomorrow morning um, uh, we will start at uh, 12 p.m. Uh, Cairo time, at 10 a.m. Uh, Universal time zone. So uh, I uh, I'm so pleased to have all of you today with us, and I hope you can join us uh, to the fourth day. And if you have any inquiry and any question, I put my email and my uh, contact in the chat room. Please, all uh, participants and speakers, uh, I have an email of speakers, but I didn't have the email of participant. Especially, he didn't uh, they didn't register to a Zoom meeting. So I encourage him uh, and uh, them to uh, send email to me, uh, prefer today, uh, and put the sub subject in email, uh, GSB symposium uh, between two brackets uh, certificate. Uh, please uh, write your full name, uh, your affiliation, uh, your contacts, uh, to can send you uh, electronic certificate to your email after finishing our symposium by Thursday, inshallah. It's okay. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Fukami. Thank you, Professor uh, Dr. Ibrahim and Dr. Ged and all uh, dear participants. Uh, I'm really honored to have all of you today and please join us tomorrow. I'm sorry, the camera has some problems. So uh, I, will accept, I will expect to uh, have more audience. I will share uh, by end of uh, today the youtube link for all um, our lectures uh, we are recording all lectures and um, uh, uploading it to a youtube um, channel so you can keep it uh, and watch it many many times uh, and forever inshallah so thank you and anyone have any question i, I see uh, it's okay to me Dr. Dr. fatima uh, to me, you can send the email. Uh, I, I will type it again before I leaving. I will I will type my email and the contact again. So give me just a minute.
Dr. Rihan, thank you so much. If any question, if, uh, I welcome any question before leaving, and please, please uh, send them uh, your emails because uh, if if I uh, stop this chat room, uh, maybe I lost some emails from you in, in here in chat, but I will keep all your emails in my email inbox. Okay. Thank you again, and it's uh, time to leave now. Thank you, Professor Fukami. You can in the, your um, side uh, room. Uh, uh, I would like to ask all of you to end the meeting now. So thank you and goodbye. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you very much. Today is really a great day, and we all enjoyed all the lectures. That's so good. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Professor Fukami, that uh, you have explained so nicely about the JSPS. And I was actually got the JSPS projects. I visited a JSPS person also over there uh, with Akira Ishiyama, as well as I Honda in the Hoshite University, Tokyo University, and Nihon University. And uh, so I really know that how good it is. And I really thank the whole JSPS community a big thanks and for supporting this seminar and voila you are doing really great thank you very much thank bye you. bye uh, so please, please apply our uh, the schemes uh, yes bilateral or quarter core program yes Japanese. exactly yeah that's what we are discussing also with voila Three member team also for Japan, Egypt, and India, all three of us, because we have uh, certain very interesting ideas in our mind. Thank you, my, my dear. It's my pleasure and I honor to be with your team, sure. And uh, I, I will prepare uh, soon a, a great point to, uh, to share it with Asia, uh, Africa GSPS uh, Fund. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. My pleasure. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, I will, I will, we will stop now. Yes. Uh, thank you. After you, dear, yeah, I, I will stop here and uh, then you, Professor Kai, you can stop. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Have a nice bye day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.